I am come to cast fire on the earth, and what will I but that it be kindled? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What is this fire that our Lord has come to earth to cast it about, and that he wills so vehemently that it be kindled? Well, the authors tell us it is actually, first and foremost, the love of God, which is often called the fire of divine charity. And this is something of which every one of our souls should be burning. We should be, just as the sacred heart of Jesus is the furnace of divine love, as just as it is the furnace of love for men, so our hearts, our souls, should be so on fire with the love of God that we too could be called a burning furnace of divine charity. This is the whole purpose of life, is to love God, because by loving God we attain our final end, which is the beatific vision. And every day we ought to grow in our love of God. If we're not doing that, we're not doing anything worthwhile. The Pharisee approached our Lord in today's gospel and asked him, which is the greatest commandment of the law? And our Lord said very simply, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart and with thy whole soul and with thy whole mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. But it's interesting to see, isn't it, how our Lord compares fire that he wants to cast on the earth. He compares earthly fire with the fire of God's love. They are, there are very, very many similarities. And in my sermon today, I want to tell you of the, the similarities, three similarities between earthly fire and the fires of the love of God. And then I wish to tell you how to preserve the flame. You notice when the acolytes go out in a procession of some sort and they're carrying the candles, and how if they're not careful, they're not guarding the flame, it, poof, it's extinguished. We want to guard the flame and keep it. So also with the flame of the love of God. So I'll tell you how to preserve it. And then not only that, but how to make it grow. We don't want in our soul just some piddly, sparkling flame of the love of God. We want an all-out conflagration of the love of God. First, fire has three effects, earthly fire. First of all, fire purifies. It tolerates nothing that is unclean. And we know also that gold is always fire tried. It is purified by the fire. And that certain other precious metals lose their dross and all of their other imperfections when applied to heat and to fire. And they say too, I didn't know this before, that lightning, which is a form of fire, lightning burns away harmful vapors in the air and it purifies the atmosphere. Fire purifies. And then when we look at the whole history of Scripture, we see how God has always used and will continue to use fire to purify. Think, first of all, of those places that reeked with sin, Sodom and Gomorrah. They were destroyed how? By fire from heaven in order to consume the unnatural vice which was prevalent there. And at the end of time, God will not destroy everything by water, as he did in the time of Noah, but he will destroy the earth by fire. There will be a great conflagration which will destroy and consume everything that is bad. In other words, it will purify the earth of sin and of vice. St. Peter said in one of his epistles, the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in which the heavens shall pass away with great violence and the elements shall be melted with heat and the earth and the works which are in it shall be burned up. And how else does God purify those 
beloved souls in purgatory who are awaiting patiently the beatific vision other than by fire. Fire always purifies. And so also with the fires of the love of God, they purify the soul. St. Ambrose said very beautifully, I really like this quote, Charity is like a burning fire which is infused into the hearts of the saints and consumes in them everything that is temporal and earthly and purifies what is impure and perfects what it touches. You see, the perfect love of God, that is, perfect love of God consists in loving God above all other things for the reason that he is infinitely good and worthy of our love. It is not that we love him above all things because we dread his punishments. That's an imperfect love. But to love God above all things because he is infinitely good is perfect love. And this type of love frees us. In other words, purifies the soul of mortal sin. Our Lord said in one of the Gospels, He that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him. And we will come to him and will make our abode with him. Now, if this statement is true, which it is, God said it and he is truth itself, then the soul which loves God, when once it loves God, can no longer be a sinner. Since God does not love the sinner as such, much less does will he make his abode in the heart of a sinner. Perfect love or charity brings about the total purification and sanctification of man. Mary Magdalene is the perfect example of this. The Pharisee, in his mind, rebuked our Lord. If he were a prophet, surely he would know what manner of woman this is. But our Lord said that she was purified already. Her soul was washed clean through love, perfect charity. Many sins are forgiven her, he said, because she hath loved much. And should you ever, dear faithful, should you ever have the misfortune to commit a mortal sin, make that act of perfect contrition right away, which this perfect contrition because it proceeds from an act of the perfect love of God, washes clean the soul, even before you receive sacramental absolution. And it is all because that perfect contrition proceeds from perfect love of Almighty God. This act purifies the soul and the sinner at that instant, so much so that were you to make, after committing a mortal sin, to make an act of perfect contrition and then resolve to go to confession at your first opportunity and on the way die in a terrible car accident, you would go to heaven, though you never received absolution from the priest because the perfect love of God purifies. Secondly, Fire gives off heat. All that is put into a fire or near it becomes heated. This requires no further explanation. If you start a fire in in your fireplace, it warms up the whole room. And so also, because charity resembles a fire, it too gives off heat. That is, charity, the heart often, the heart of a sinner is often depicted as a cold, icy heart that cannot be moved by anything but its own misguided will. But once the fires of divine love come into the heart, then the ice melts and we gain back a fleshy heart of love. And once the fire is enkindled by God, the soul becomes so inflamed with the love of him that he is then able to overcome every difficulty, every obstacle, every trial on the path of salvation. That is what love does. It warms us so much that we're willing to suffer anything. 
Now, if we compare human love to the love of God, think of this. That simply human love, that is, the love that we have for a friend, a relative, a sibling, or the love that one spouse has for another. If that love, which is only human, can make us sacrifice so many things, if that human love can make a husband give up his life, literally, for love of his wife, or if we would lay down our life to protect our children, then how much more would we be willing to suffer if our hearts were all on fire with the love of God? Love makes all things light. All the sufferings of this world become light as long as we love God. If an earthly, rather John Chrysostom said that this love of God conquers all so that neither fire nor sword nor poverty nor sickness nor death nor anything of the kind appears difficult to him who is animated by the love of God. And this naturally brings all of our thoughts to the holy martyrs of the Catholic Church. Think of all that they endured so very patiently. Never a whimper, never a cry, never a complaint in all of their cruel tortures. For they loved God so much that there was nothing that they could do that would satisfy the need to prove that love to God. And oftentimes we read that the executioners often tired of their work before the martyrs tired of suffering. And so also you read when our Lord was scourged at the pillar, that you saw, you see it in the movie, The Passion of Christ, that he was scourged so much that he fell to the ground, and the soldiers were all tired and weary, and they would ha- they had to switch soldiers, replace the two with another two, That is what is said. But then you see our Lord rise again because the love of that he had for us and for his father was so great. He had to prove to us how much that love existed in his heart. And so it must be with us that we are not going to going to be called into the arena. Well, in a sense, we are called into the arena every day. We have to fight against ourselves. We have to fight against the devil. We have to fight against the world. We're always in the arena. And we must, if we are on fire with the love of God, bear all of that, all of those temptations, courageously and manfully and patiently. But third, fire always ascends. Have you ever noticed when you light a candle, you hold it in your hand the right way, the fire is going up. And if you turn it sideways, the flame doesn't go shoot out the side. It's still going up. Even if you turn it upside down, the flame tends to do one of these things. Fire always ascends. And so also the love of God, which is a supernatural fire, always tends to make us go upwards. Souls that love God seek Not the things that are here, but the things that are in heaven. And their hearts belong to Almighty God. And even though they live and they work in the world and they they attend to all of their temporal duties of their state in life, and they enjoy innocent pleasures, and they like certain foods and certain drinks, though they do all of these things, all of these things for those souls are secondary. And ultimately, they are all done in accordance with God's will. So that by using these things, it leads them closer and closer to God. And that is how the saints merited, even by enjoying the food that they liked. You think of Pius X, who loved his cigars and even his cigarettes. You think of St. Gertrude and her love of grapes. They merited by these things. 
because all was directed, all that they did ascended and led them heavenward. And if we wish to save our souls, we've got to love God, not with a flickering flame of love. We've got to love him above all things and at all times. There is no vacation time when it comes to loving God. Even on our vacations, we must love him. And the fire of love, the fire of the love of God must be preserved. This leads me to the third part. How are we to preserve? Once God has put the fire of love into our hearts, how do we preserve it? Well, as I said, we've got to find some way. Well, first we must protect it from every mortal sin. Because mortal sin and the love of God are absolutely incompatible. Because when we're in the state of grace, we have turned our back on the creatures and we are facing our Lord. We are face to face with him. We're converted to God. But once we have committed a single mortal sin, then we've turned our back on God and we've converted to the cre- to the creature. We prefer the creature to God himself. The love of God and mortal sin cannot exist together in a soul. It is the worst evil in the world, and we must all be prepared to die rather than sin. And this is not just some pious saying. We must literally be ready to die than to consent to a mortal sin. Secondly, we guard the flame by protecting it from venial sin. Although mortal sin extinguishes the fire of charity, venial sin does not extinguish it. Rather, it weakens the love of God. Have you ever had a big campfire in your backyard, perhaps? And you try to put it out with just a glass full of water. Well, it doesn't put it out. It doesn't even come close. But it does stop a little bit of it. And if you keep coming back time after time with a glass of water and pouring it on the fire, sooner or later, you're going to extinguish the fire. That is what venial sin does. That little by little, it puts out the fire until at last it's all gone. And then secondly, we must avoid venial sin because it leads to mortal sin. St. Isidore said, God permits those who disregard venial sins to fall into mortal sins as a punishment for their carelessness. Then finally, we're not after just preserving this little flame of the love of God. As I said, we want to keep it burning. We want to keep feeding it until it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, until it's out of control, in a sense. How do we feed this fire of the love of God? Well, first, by prayer. There are common and easy ways to do it, but prayer is the best because prayer puts us always in a devout frame of mind. What is prayer? Prayer is not just saying words. It's not just a duty to get done and out of the way. Prayer is the lifting up of the mind and the heart to God and to truly be having a conversation, a little chat with Almighty God. And so we must make time for our prayer every single day, every day, to make the love of God grow. Secondly, we must practice meditation. And don't let that big word scare you off. Meditation isn't all that bad. Meditation is simply reflecting on some truth of our faith and just thinking about it. And sooner or later, your thought turns into a prayer, a discussion with our Lord, and then that turns into some little resolution made. It can be done in five minutes, but meditation is essential, for it softens the heart like wax. It makes it impressionable. And then lastly, we keep these fires burning by frequent confession and frequent communion. Nothing, one of the the, the uh, religious authors said, nothing kindles the fire of charity in our hearts more than Holy Communion. Because then we are in direct contact with God himself. 
his body united to ours, his divinity united to our soul, his blood flows through our veins. We are in direct contact with God at every holy communion. What else could kindle the fires of love in a heart more than frequent holy communion? That is a thought worth reflecting on. But let us today and always keep these thoughts in our mind that the whole purpose of life is to love God and to not and to love him more and more. And every day until the, our last breath, we should be loving God more, not less, not the same, but more until our hearts are all on fire. Like St. Francis de Sales said, he said once, if I knew that there were, were a single fiber in my heart that did not burn with the love of God, I would rip it out. That's how we should be. Let us pray then to Our Lady today to enkindle these fires of love in our hearts and to keep them burning until the moment of our death. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.